Hello, and welcome to our last section of Chapter 8. Um, so, up until now, we've been dealing with conic sections and the different kinds of conic sections there are. Um, we had the circle, the ellipse, the hyperbola, and the parabola. Um, so today, what I want to talk about is solving systems of equations. This is something you've actually done before, but we're just going to complicate it a little bit more because, you know, algebra 2. Why not? Okay, so... Uh, I just want to review a little bit, just in case you've forgotten everything about systems of equations. Um, so remember, systems of equations was when they gave you like two equations um, with x's and y's in it, and you had to solve for both x and y. Um, so graphically, this was like, where would the equations, if you graph them out, where would they intersect? So where would the lines cross? So that's basically what we're dealing with. We're just going to complicate it um, with conic sections instead of just lines. So to review, um, we had two different ways to do this by algebra. So um, we could either use substitution or elimination. So I'm going to do the same problem both ways. And then before we complicate it, um, we'll do it with like a basic, this is what you used to do type way, and then we'll complicate it. So with um, substitution, let's say the problem was 6x minus y equals 11, and the second equation was 2x plus 3y equals 7. So with substitution, remember the goal is to get one of the variables by itself. Um, so like this equation, the 6x minus y equals 11, I can rewrite this to get y by itself. I can rewrite this as y equals 6x minus 11 by rearranging stuff. It's basic algebra there. Okay, then knowing that y equals 6x minus 11, I can substitute that in because I see my second equation has a y in it. So I can just plug in y equals this into the y here. So that would make this second equation the 2x plus 3, and then instead of y, I would plug in the 6x minus 11, and then that would be equal to 7. So now I'm down to one equation with just one variable, just x's in it, so it's a lot easier to solve. So I'm just going to distribute, and then solve for x. So adding my x's together, I get 20x, and adding my 33 to the other side, I get 40. So x equals 2. But remember, we're not done yet. We have to have coordinates, so we need x comma y. We got the x, we still have to get y. Earlier, I had the equation y equals 6x minus 11. So I could just plug in the x back in to get y equals 6 times 2 minus 11 is 1. So y equals 1. My final answer will look like a coordinate. Because if I were to graph out these two lines, this is the point where the two lines would cross. Okay, so that was the substitution method. Elimination. I'm going to use the same problem and solve it by elimination. So remember, elimination was the one where we wanted either the x's or the y's to have the same coefficient in front. So like both of these would have to be 6's, or both of these would have to be 3's. So you have to be able to multiply one of the equations, or maybe both of the equations, by some number in order to get the coefficients to match. You only need one of the variables co coefficients to match, so either the x's or the y's, because then that allows us to eliminate it. Um, not only do we want it to be the same number, but also like one positive, one negative, so that they'll cancel each other out. So what I'm gonna do is solve for x first. So I'm gonna eliminate the x's first by multiplying the bottom equation by negative three. So that means every single thing in that equation has to get multiplied by negative three. So that'll give me, let me rewrite my first equation first. Please ignore that sound. That is my cat trying to dig through her litter box. Um, so multiplying my negative 3 by the 2 will give me negative 6x minus 9y equals negative 21. Okay, so now all we do is just add all the way through because if I add 6x minus 6x, that cancels out. And then negative y minus 9y is negative 10y, or negative y plus negative 9y technically is what we're doing. And then 11 plus negative 21 is negative 10. Dividing both sides by negative 10, I get y equals 1. And then plug it back in. So you're going to choose one of the original equations to plug your y back into. So I'm going to choose the first one just because 
whatever. So minus y would be minus 1 equals 11. So moving my 1 over to the other side and then dividing by 6, I get x equals 2. So again, my final answer would be in coordinate form, 2 comma 1. Okay. So that was like the basic way to do substitution and the basic way to do elimination. So we're just going to do that with slightly more complicated things. Okay, so dealing with systems of equations with conic sections. So now basically what we're trying to do is figure out um, if we were to graph this out, where would, um, if one of my equations was a line and the other equation was a parabola, where would this, they cross? So um, Maybe like this is the equation of my line if I were to graph it out, and my parabola is like here or something. So I would want to know how many times does it cross, where exactly does it cross. So um, like right here, there's one intersection point. And even if I extend my line, because you know lines go on forever, and my parabola technically goes on forever too, there's another point of intersection. So here, rather than just getting one answer for um, where the graphs would cross. Um, here I would get two. Or another example, because you know one of our first conic sections was a circle. So let's say I had a circle like this, and if I were to graph it out, whatever, um, and maybe with a line. So then my line could go something like this. I'm looking for the coordinates of those two intersection points. Um, sometimes they might never cross. So let's say I had an ellipse out here and the equation of the line graphed over here so this would be no solution because there's nowhere where the two graphs intersect um, we might even have more than two so if you think about it it could cross multiple times depending on what types of graphs we have um, <clears throat> let's say I had a circle and a parabola that went through the circle how many times does that cross um, if we were to solve out something like this, we would have one, two, three, four different coordinates. So like that's four different X's and four different Y's that we would have to solve for. <clears throat> so all of these things is possible. Um, so that's, that's basically what we're doing, but we're going to use substitution, elimination, and maybe even graphing. Um, so I'm going to start off by graphing because that's the most visual way to do it. Um, so you can see what we're trying to solve for and what it looks like. Okay, so I'm going to start off with this example. I've got x squared plus y squared equals 4 as my first equation and y equals x squared minus 4 as my second equation. So here, first of all, um, we want to figure out what kind of shapes are we graphing here. So for the first equation, I've got x squared plus y squared equals 4. Um, I think out of all the conic sections that we've done, um, this looks closest to a circle because I've got like the x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. Um, so if that's the case, my center for the circle would be at 0, 0 with a radius of 2. So graphing that out, center of 0, 0, radius of 2. Would be there. There's my beautiful circle. OK, second equation. Um, the second equation is y equals x squared minus 4. So y equals x squared minus 4. Only one of the terms is squared, so that's the x squared is squared. So that should be a parabola then, because um, in all the other types of conic sections, both x's and y's had to be squared. So if this is a parabola, then um, it sounds like this is going to be a parabola that faces up because we've got the x's that are squared. Um, it kind of looks like it's in vertex form. So 0 comma negative 4, because it's like x minus 0 squared minus 4. Um, so if negative 0, negative 4 is the vertex, we can make an xy chart to kind of figure out where the rest of the points are. So let's just do x equals 1, um, 2, we already did 0. Okay, so when x equals 1, y equals 1 squared minus 4 is negative 3. And when 2, 2 squared minus 4 equals 0. Okay, so we have a point 1 comma negative 3. 
and then we have a point two comma zero. It's right there. Uh, I mean, it's a parabola, so it's got to be the same on the other side. So I'm just going to reflect these two points. Okay. Actually, let me graph this in a different color so you can see. So it looks like this is going to be our parabola like this. Okay. So then looking to see where our two graphs cross. Um, it looks like it's just going to be two points right here and right here. Because the rest of these points here, they're kind of like, I drew my graph with really thick markers. So it's hard to tell, but it's just going to be those two points. And so when you graph it, that's what you're looking for. Just where do they cross? Where do they touch? Um, so in the end, our answers are going to be the points 2 comma 0 and negative 2 comma 0. Because those are the coordinates of those two points right there. Okay. So that's solving by graphing. Okay, so next I want to solve by substitution. That's our second method of solving um, systems of equations with quadratics in it. So by substitution, remember that's the one where we wanted to plug stuff back in. Um, our goal is to get one of the x's or the y's by itself. So like, look, this equation already has y by itself. So that would be super easy to just plug into my other equation. So substitute this y in for this y here. So instead of 2x plus y, it'll be 2x plus all of this stuff that y stands for. Okay, so once I've done that, then I have just this one equation with just x's in it, so I can just solve for x now. I do have an x squared in it, which probably means I'm going to need to either factor or use the quadratic formula to solve for x here. Um, so first, let me set it equal to 0, because in order to use either of those methods, I have to have one side equal to 0, and combine any like terms. So if I rearrange some stuff here... I end up with x squared plus 8x plus 12 equals 0. Um, I know this is factorable, so I'm going to factor because it goes a little bit faster. Um, two numbers that multiply to 12 but add to 8 would be um, 6 and 2. So then solving for x, I get x equals negative 6 from this one and negative 2 from the x plus 2. Okay, so this tells me that my graph, if I were to graph this out, um, would cross twice because I have two x's. So that also means I have to solve for two different y's. So when I plug my x's back in, I'm going to have to do this twice, once with the negative 6 and once with the negative 2. Um, I'm going to use the y equals equation because it's already set equal to y, but it doesn't matter. You can use the first equation if you want. It really doesn't matter. Um, so plugging in to my y equals x squared plus 6, x plus 7, I have negative 6 squared plus 6 times negative 6 plus 7. Um, I think this gives me, oh, let me label this. So when x equals negative 6, I get 36 minus 36 plus 7 is 7. And then when x equals negative 2, Um, I got 4 minus 12 is negative 8 plus 7 is negative 1. So that means for my first uh, x equals negative 6, my y value was 7. For x equals negative 2, my y value is negative 1. That means these two coordinates are where the graphs would cross. And you could check by graphing it out yourself if you really wanted. The first equation here, this is a line, and the second equation is a parabola. So if you think about it, a line and a parabola could very possibly cross twice. Okay, so that's substitution. Nothing crazy. I'm going to do an example with elimination. Okay, so in this example, we want to solve by elimination, which means we want to eliminate one of the variables. And with elimination, we usually just want things to be able to like cancel out with each other and have the um, coefficients in front be the same. So in this problem, it looks like we have both equations have an x squared in it. So that's probably a good idea to eliminate. And then all my other variables, I got y's here. This is a y, this is a y squared. So even if I tried to eliminate the y's, these wouldn't eliminate because one is squared and one is not. So that, those are things you want to pay attention to. Um, with elimination. Um, so 
What I'm going to do, since my x squareds are in both equations and they already both have a coefficient of 1, I'm just going to multiply one of the equations by negative 1. That way 1 is positive, 1 is negative. So I'll multiply the second equation by negative 1. This will give me the first equation stays the same. The second equation will now be this. Okay. So now I just need to add the two equations together. So x squared plus negative x squared cancels out. Negative y plus negative y squared are not even like terms, so let me keep them separate. So I have negative y squared minus y, and I'm adding 3 with nothing. And then 0 plus negative 9 is negative 9. So now I have an equation with just y's in it. I have a y squared, so I'll probably need to factor which means I probably need one side equal to zero. So let me move the nine over to the other side by adding. I'm left with negative y squared minus y plus 12 equals zero. This is still not pretty to factor because I've got this negative in front of the y squared. So let me multiply the entire thing by negative one. Or if you want to think about it as um, adding all of these things over to this side and moving the zero to the other side. But either way, we don't want to factor with um, anything in front of the y squared, so like no negatives. Okay, so from here, much easier to factor. Um, I got two numbers that multiply to negative 12 but add to positive 1, so 4 and negative 3. So that'll give me y plus 4 and y minus 3, so that means y equals negative 4 and positive 3. Okay, so again, that means I have two answers um, since I got two values for y, which means I have to plug it in for x twice. Um, I think I'm going to use the x squared plus y squared equals 9 equation. It doesn't matter which one you use, but this one um, is calling my name. Actually, no, JK, I don't want to do that. This one already has y by itself. Let's do the first one. But again, it really doesn't matter which one you choose, even if it's easier or not. Um, so minus y for when y equals negative 4 would mean that I'm subtracting a negative 4 plus 3 equals 0. Um, so this gives me x squared plus 7 equals 0, x squared equals negative 7. That's super awkward because when I take the square root of both sides, I end up with an imaginary number because you can't take the square root of a negative number. So there's actually no solution for this one which means y equals negative 4 is not an, even in a solution. If you want to call that extraneous, cool, but it ends up not working. So now let's plug in y equals 3 into my x squared minus 3 plus 3 equals 0. So I get x squared equals 0. So x equals 0 here. I don't even get two solutions here. So that means my only answer for this problem is going to be 0 comma 3. Make sure you write your um, numbers in the right order. It's x equals first, so that comes first, then y second. Okay, so for this problem, there's only one solution. So if I were to graph these out, I think this first one is a parabola. The second one is a circle. So whenever, wherever it meets, it only meets in one spot at this point right here, 0, comma, 3. I want to do another elimination problem just because... You know, elimination is a little weird sometimes. Um, so for this next example, I have x squared plus y squared equals 25 as my first equation, and y plus 5 equals 1 half x squared as my second equation. So for this one, again, um, just looking at what variables I want to eliminate or um, use substitution for. Um, so for any of our problems, both elimination and substitution will always work. One will be easier than the other sometimes, and sometimes not. But for this one, um, it doesn't really look like substitution would make a lot of sense because the only equation I have, like one variable by itself, would be the, this one has the y um, by itself. But substituting that in, into the second equation is not going to be pretty because I'm going to have to square things, and that's not nice. Um, so elimination is probably easier, but elimination... This one has a y, this one has a y squared, so it's not like that can be eliminated. So I guess my x squareds would be the closest, um, but they don't have the same coefficient in front yet. This one has a 1 in front of it, this one has a half, so we probably need to multiply things out to make it match. Um, I'm also going to rearrange the second one just so it's like in the same 
order as the first equation just makes things a little bit easier. So um, in order to for them to both have the same coefficient, I think I'm going to multiply my second equation by negative 2, because then multiplying a negative 2 by the 1 half will give me negative 1 to contrast with the 1x squared. So my first equation stays the same. My second equation, multiplying everything in it by negative 2, gives me negative 2y minus 10 equals negative x squared. And then I'm just going to rearrange the second equation just so it looks nicer. So I'm going to move the x squared over to this side. So add x squared to both sides and then there, slightly better. Okay, then going from there. Oh, that's awkward because I started out with a negative x squared, but now it became positive once I moved it over to the other side. Let me just multiply it by negative one more time. Okay, did it changed all the signs. Okay, so now adding my two equations together, x squared plus negative x squared cancels out, y squared plus 2y, or not like terms, um, plus 10 equals 25 plus 0. Okay, again I have y squared so I'm going to have to factor, so let's set this equal to 0 by subtracting 25 on both sides. And then let's factor this out. Two numbers that multiply to negative 15, but add to 2, uh, 5 and negative 3. So y equals negative 5 and positive 3. So let's plug this back in. Choose an equation. Um, I'm going to choose the second one. Um, so y plus 5 equals 1 half x squared. I'm just going to plug it in over here. I got space. Okay, so when y equals negative 5, then negative 5 plus 5 equals 1 half x squared. Negative 5 plus 5 is just 0. Um, let's multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of that 1 half. x squared equals 0, so x equals 0. Okay. So that's one of my coordinates. I've got 0, comma, negative 5. And then let's plug in the y equals 3. Multiply both sides by 2. Okay. So I ended up with x squared equals 16. So when we square root both sides, make sure you remember there's a plus or minus there. These are um, graphs of the equations, so we're allowed to have negative numbers for x's and y's. Um, so make sure you have the plus or minus, which really means when y equals 3, x is both positive 4 and negative 4. So all three of these points are solutions. Craziness. Okay, that's all I got for solving systems of equations. Hopefully that was helpful. Um, meet me on Microsoft Teams during my office hours if you have any questions.